Wolf here, kind of an exciting day. Uh, for those that have been following on um, Facebook, they'll have noticed that I've been uh, making a set of, of armoured pieces for my horse George. Now that was following being in touch with these guys here. This is Dave and I'm at Wormwick Creations. Now um, most of us have seen the big movies where you have masses of people in all sorts of armour and various things and quite often I've wondered how they managed to reproduce that en masse. Now, Dave's business specialises in um, polyurethane uh, creations, armour and uh, replications for film, TV and uh, live action role play, which is love. Now, Dave is um, putting the final riveting together on George's Crinit, oh, sorry, Chamfron, um, Crinit said we've got done next. Uh, I loosely riveted together to make sure that he uh, was happy with it. And what we're going to do is take a print from that take a mould from that so we can have a safe section of armour for George um, but also what we're here for as well is the suit of armour here now I'm doing a knight's appearance with good friends of mine from Cavalry of Heroes and uh, Wormrick are providing the suit of armour for me uh, Mark will be doing his appearance um, in his armour um, with the horse and then I gather I'm going to be doing sort of a supporting uh, part and some um, potential sword fighting with whoever wants to have a go. So I guess a good bit of armour was worth having. Now this being polyurethane is far safer and far lighter than steel and it looks the business. So I'm going to leave Dave to do uh, what he's doing uh, but what I'll do is I'll take some pictures and footage of some of the amazing stuff they've got here and the details that are created well by this amazing workshop. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll continue with this footage and uh, I'll show you what they're all about. Okay. Right, here's a new set of pieces they've produced. The ominous armour, there's a shoulder armour, it's a belt. Now that's available in all sorts of finishes, but obviously the more complicated, the more sort of costly you'll get. There's a slightly plainer set here, the shells. Uh, I was really interested and impressed with these, the bark finish, amazing. Now up here, historians might recognise the Sutton Hoo helmet. You get close up to see the detail of replication on that, it's amazing. Other pieces, other stars. So what I'm here for is this gothic armour set, as described not strictly sort of gothic but the nearest description they've got, but this is fully articulated, fully flexible, with a nice bit of extra rust, just for detail. These greaves, new leg sections. The hinge detail on there, which actually isn't, as you can see, a hinge. Amazing. This was an entertaining one. It's a mole for a tortoise back. Here we are. Here we've got pieces in progress. Sort of cuffs with the lion's heads on. Braces. Now, this is part of a range that I first saw. It's very heavily armoured, riveted sections. The helmet for that is brilliant, I'll show that in a minute. But uh, again, the bark finish in its raw form, moulded. Produced en masse relatively quickly for armies out of nowhere. Film and television. Imagine trying to make that in steel. It would cost thousands, absolute thousands. And this is the helmet I first saw that led me to find these guys. The detail on it is incredible. Again, the other side. And when you buy a helmet, you have to uh, pad it out and fit it support it for yourself but uh, once that's done again if I put it on the bench 
flexible. If you take a bash with that, it's not going to harm you. Not going to hurt anybody. Nice and flexible. And so Celtic tree shoulder armor.
That's just crazy how quick that happens. Thank you. 